I was working off Nassau in the Bahamas. This was pirate territory, but I wasn't looking for sunken gold. I'd been hired to do a submarine geological survey, searching for rare elements, using the TV camera on my boat. But I found myself looking at something more startling trouble. Her foot seemed to be jammed, and she handled the pry bar like a baby learning to use a spoon. But when I broke her free, she started to fight me. I was afraid she was suffering from oxygen starvation. I pulled her up to the surface. You let go of me. Push it. Stop pushing me. Uh, I've never tried so hard in my life to save somebody. What's the matter with you, anyway? Maybe next time you'll try the buddy system, huh? Are you finished, mister? Mr. Nelson. Mike Nelson. I wasn't in trouble. You weren't in trouble. I was trying to pry free a geological sample that's taken me a week to find. Hey, what's up? This is Mr. Nelson. He's just cost us seven days' hard work. Five minutes conversation, and the gal was still furious at me. I guess all I can do is apologize. I could have sworn that you I were... I could swear, too, but I'm trying to control myself. Sis, the guy just saved your life. I suppose so. Oh, look, I apologize, too. I, I'm just not a very good diver. I might have been in real trouble. You couldn't know. I'm Terry King. This is my brother, Jeff. All right, Jeff. Terry, why don't you stick around for a while? All right. Here, give your hand. Uh, maybe I can do more than apologize. Maybe I can retrieve that ore sample of yours. I got all the necessary equipment. That was a pegmatite formation that you were working on down there, wasn't it? How did you know that? Nelson. You're the diver who's running the geological survey for the Briggs Foundation. Uh, how'd you know that? I applied to them for a research grant and got turned down. I'm a gemologist. When they refused, Jeff and I worked up our own scratch expedition. We're looking for jade. Jade? In this part of the world? I know. There isn't supposed to be any around here. That's what the Briggs people said. Jeff, get the statue. Jade statue. I bought it at a market in Nassau about a month ago. It was carved right here in the Bahamas. Does the foundation know about this? Yes, I told them. They were very polite, but they wanted to see evidence. That's why Jeff and I are diving. I had the jade analyzed. Calcium deposit shows it was underwater for a long time. I think it's an underwater vein. You do. That's why we figure nobody ever looked for jade around here before. It's good quality. We haven't found any yet either because we're both amateur divers. Now, if we had some help from an expert diver, one with a background in submarine geology. I got the message and it interested me. If there were natural jade in this area, its discovery would be of great scientific value.
Terry and Jeff offered me an equal share in anything that we found. And I figured that I owed her a favor. I agreed. We combined forces and laid out our search scientifically. The first thing to do was to locate the source of the jade statue. We began in the Nassau straw market. The straw market is an institution in Nassau and a center for gossip. At first, the only answer that I got was no. But ultimately, I picked up a couple of names. One, an island, Little Thatchkey. The other, a man, Thomas F. Sherrington. My search took me to the native fishing dock, the salty madhouse. I asked the same questions and got the same answers until a fish peddler came through with a set of directions. The last boat down the line, that's where I'd find Thomas F. Sherrington. I thanked him for the information, refused the fish, and headed for the mystery man. Yeah. Uh, Mike Nelson's my name. Welcome aboard. I talk to you? Yes, sir. Uh, have a seat. Okay. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> What's your problem, old boy? Well, it has to do with this jade statue. Jade, eh? Native jade, recently carved. It was found on one of these islands, Little Thatchkey. You don't say. Remarkable swimmers and divers, these types. Never know what they're going to come up with. Come up with all kinds of things. Oh, oh you hurt yourself? Oh, no, that black leather. <laughs> now, what I want to find out is just exactly where that native jade came from. Good heavens, old man, what on earth for? Well, for one reason, uh, there's not supposed to be any native jade in this part of the world. Oh, just a fluke, you know. Doubt whether you'll ever find any more from there. Well, for some reason or other, I was told that you might be able to help me, but apparently you don't know anything about this jade business, huh? <laughs> well, nice meeting, Mr. Sherrington. Uh, Nelson, are you uh, going to Little Thatch K? Right now. <laughs> Good old American get up and go, eh? <laughs> but you will need a guide, old boy. Oh? And you shall have one. Oh, I will, huh? Yeah, I'll guide you. You? Yes, my dear fellow. I've been living on Little Thatch Cave for some 20 years or more. But let's not go into that now. No time to waste, you know. We want to get going right away. Shall we? <laughs> we started immediately on my boat. That afternoon, we began searching off Little Thatch Cave. With a TV camera, we covered many times the area that a single diver might survey. We had the area all staked out. Somewhere in there. Two days later, the first of a series of unlucky accidents hit us. I had found a promising formation and collected a bucket load of samples. I tried to send them up. The catch on the line gave and dumped the results of a solid morning's work. That same afternoon, it got much more serious. I was with Terry when suddenly I wasn't getting any air. I hauled my air hose around and it was torn, almost in two. Luckily, Terry caught on quickly. We both shared our air supply and headed for the surface. 
a new air hose, and I dove again immediately. We had found promising formations earlier, and I was getting a touch of jade fever. Suddenly, I was looking straight at a massive chunk of what seemed to be jadeite, an extrusion in a low reef. Hey, what gifts? You look like you ran into a mermaid. Well, it's a mermaid, several hundred pounds of rich, beautiful, dark green, smooth jade. Several hundred pounds. I want to see this myself. You could be wrong. Well, you're all invited. I began driving star nails around the jade chunk as pegs for explosives. And as I worked, I came to one conclusion. When I had reported the discovery, Sherrington looked as though he had swallowed a live octopus. It was he who figured out as the man behind our run of accidents. I was looking forward to a cozy talk with Thomas F. Sherrington. My air was low when I finished but we were on the last lap. I was feeling the reaction. I wanted something hot to eat and a good night's sleep. But when I reached the surface, my boat had vanished. I couldn't understand it, but one thing was all too clear. It was late afternoon. I was 12 miles from land in shark-infested waters. This last accident was a death sentence. I found myself adrift, miles from land, my boat gone. But there had already been too many suspicious accidents. This time, I had taken precautions. I had worn an emergency belt with a signal packet containing smoke bombs. I was in a mood to use an axe on somebody, and I thought I knew just who. Mike, you're all right, thank heavens. I just realized what happened to me. You must have drifted a couple of miles away from you, Mike. Yes, uh, most fortunate that you were rescued, old man. Save it, Sheriff. I beg your pardon. First the basket, then the air hose, and now this. But this one adds up to attempted murder. Oh, you're babbling nonsense, old man. If you'll excuse me, we'll talk about this when you regain control. I've got control of myself. If I didn't have, I'd throw you overboard. Now, you tell me. Why? I deny your allegations, sir, and I demand to be let off this boat. I'll let you off. I'll throw you. No, no, no. I'll give you some of your own medicine. I haven't mastered the art of swimming. Huh? Well, you either swim or talk. I can't swim, I tell you. Well, then talk. Let me try to explain. 
Okay. Well, I admit I did have a hand in some of your minor difficulties. Minor? Well, it was meant merely as an inconvenience, nothing more. Oh, what about this last inconvenience? You left me to drown. I had nothing to do with that. Nothing. Who did? That didn't work, so you tried murder. You see, these people on the island are my friends. I deal with the outside world for them. Nothing more. Your friends. When they discovered Jade, friendship went overboard. I don't want the Jade. I don't even want his existence now. Oh, you don't, huh? Nelson. I've lived on Little Thatch Cay for a long time. These islanders are unspoiled. Untouched by the outside world. They know... They know neither greed nor avarice. And I don't want them to know. It's a very pretty story. But what about attempted murder? I know nothing of that. Nothing. Okay, we'll let it ride for a while. I knew you were a just man, Mr. Nelson. Yeah, if I were a just man, I'd throw you overboard. The next morning, I set the explosive charges. But as I worked, I kept thinking about sharing them. The man sounded sincere, but I knew better than to trust him. She went off all right. You think it did any good? I think we jarred that jade a little, yeah. There it was. Thrown clear by the blast. And in perfect condition. I figured the weight at several hundred pounds. was simple. After I managed to roll the jade into the net, we closed it into a mesh. Now we could just pull it behind the boat, all the way into Nassau. The net was fast. The slack was out of the line. She was ready to roll.
Then I heard the engine of my boat starting up. Something had gone wrong. What, I didn't know. But if I didn't get to the boat fast, I'd be marooned. I had one chance, and one chance only. For the first time in a while, I began to think, to wonder just what had happened, and who it was up there who was trying to kill me. Killing me was secondary. The jade was the main item, and I controlled the jade. It worked beautifully. I knew that someone would have to come down after the jade, and I was waiting. I was expecting Sherrington, but there were two divers. I recognized Terry, and then Jeff, and it hit me like a hammer. It was they who wanted the jade badly enough to kill for it. Jeff King was big and tough, but he was no expert underwater. Terry didn't wait for the final score. She swam for the boat. idling when I grabbed the end of the trailing line and wrapped it around the boat's propeller. Terry did the rest for me. As the propeller spun, it jammed itself and stopped the boat dead. I'll take that. What am I going to do with you? If I may broach a suggestion, I'd be only too happy to contribute to the cause. Turn around. Please. May I? Put your hands up there, young lady. No use at all. We'll have to use someone on her brother Jeff when we pick him up. Oh, I'm sure we have enough left to go around. You know, Nelson, this puts you in the most fortunate position of being the only one able to get at the jade. Yeah, I guess that's right. Are you going back after it? Sherrington, you can't prevent change. The world is going to move in on your little island sooner or later. Yes, I... I suppose it is. Would a delay, say, of a few months uh, give you time to prepare your people? I told you once before, if you remember, that I thought you were a just man. I was right. I'll be back next week at the same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh? Thank you.